be showing a educational Dead by Daylight mini guide to how to play Survivor. In this guide, you'll be seeing how to run around and run away from the killer, how to hide from the killer, what perks you should look at investing in, what survivors you should level up, and a basic rundown of the game. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. My name is Fungus, and I'm an educational Dead by Daylight streamer over in Twitch. I can talk very fast, but I'm going to be trying to slow it down a little bit for the new beautiful people in my audience who want to get into Dead by Daylight. So Dead by Daylight is a five-player atmospheric co-op horror-based game. Four survivors need to to work together to avoid one killer or played by humans and you need to escape via either the exit gate or the hatch. Now there is a variety of survivors to choose between as you can see you can get a little bit overwhelmed by the sheer number but that is okay. I'm going to be talking to you about the best two choices to level up when you're brand new to the game. Choice number one is going to be Megan. Megan comes with three, what are these are called, teachable perks. Now, teachables are unlocked at level 30, 35, and 40. All survivors come with teachable perks. Therefore, you can play any character you want and have any perk in the game you want. The only difference is a cosmetic, so you can play whatever or whoever you're going to enjoy the most. So Megan right now comes with three really decent teachable perks. She allows you to run away from the killer and have an advantage and make it longer time for the killer to actually catch you without going into elaborate detail about that. Moving on to the other option here is Nia. Now Nia is a little bit differently. Her three perks do different things. We have an exhaustion perk which allows her to fall from a height and then run very fast. Much like Meg, she allow she's allowed to run very fast just because Nia has to fall from a height before she can run very fast. We also have Urban Evasion, which is going to allow you to hide from the killer and be very crouched low to the ground and try and hide from him as opposed to running alongside Streetwise. Now, I don't want to go into too many details about the perks in this bare basic guide, but we are going to be pointing a couple of things out. Now, in Dead by Daylight, your main objective is to power the exit gates, and to do that, you're required to complete five generators. Every match will have seven generators on it. The killer's objective is to kill all survivors and protect the generators. So you only have to power five. Split pressure and working in different areas is normally the most efficient way. A lot of people who start Dead by Daylight do complain that they're found and caught very quickly and easily. So generally an immerse or a very hiding start is probably the way you want to start until you see the killer, you know where the killer is, then you can get straight to work. So looking over here as well, the killer has five totems that will appear randomly on the map also. These totems can be broken, they are perks as well for the killer if he is running certain certain abilities to make them stronger. I will have a video coming right up after this showing you guys how to run from the killer, how to hide from the killer, alongside a little bit of in-game information. So if you like the video guys, don't hesitate to uh, come in and subscribe or follow the channel. So thank you so much and uh, let's have a look at that video going to be pointing out some of the basic tips. Now to my left hand side you're going to be able to see a generator here. My main objective is to power all the generators and escape through an exit gate. So before I get into showing you the generator we have an exit door right here. As you see there is no lights on, there is no indicator that is powered. In the bottom left hand side of the screen you're going to be able to see there are two generators that I need to power or possibly the trap door. So when coming over to a generator you have to hold mouse one or whatever key it indicates on the screen to start completing the generator. A generator will take approximately 80 seconds to complete if you're on it by itself. However, at random points while doing the generator, you will be prompted with a skill check, which will also give you a sound indicator. So any second now, we're going to be able to hear an indicator of when we're going to need to press a certain button that will appear on the screen. There it is. And we need to land inside that. As you can see, the window between the skill checks is very large and very different. However, if you do not hit that small little area that you have to, there'll be a colored in bit, then an extra bit not colored. It in. If you are to miss that, it will make a sound on the generator, producing sparks. That'll also reveal the killer my location, so he's going to know that somebody was working on that generator, and I need to somehow evade them and get away. So if we're listening very carefully, we can see we have the trapper here, and we can hear a heartbeat indicating the killer is within 32 meters. So there he is, he's looking around, and he's going to rotate away. Now I need to make one of two things. I could go through that and work on that generator again, or I could rotate elsewhere. So we're going to come through here. Another thing to be mindful of when Dead by Daylight is totems. Now you're going to be able to see a totem here in the corner. A lot of people run past them, but these are quite powerful. Certain totems empower the killer and make them stronger towards the end of the game, so it's generally very good to break this. However, while doing a break animation on the totem, you'll hear that crunch sound. A killer walking past is going to be able to hear that too, giving an indication of your location. Just be very mindful of that kind of thing. Right? So my objective is to power the... Uh, 
generators and escape through the exit. However, there is an alternative means of exit. Once all your teammates are dead, or when you are last alive, or you have a key, alternatively, all generators are powered, something called the hatch will spawn. So I need to either do two generators and escape through the exit, or escape through the hatch. Now you might hear that humming sound on the screen right now, that indicates a draft or a breeze going through the hatch, allowing me and the killer, we can both hear it, to know that the hatch is nearby and around. So if we come in here right now, we're going to be able to see a hole into the abyss. This is actually safety. This is actually safety. This is going to allow me to live and escape the trial by jumping through the hatch. So this is one of the alternative ways to escape in Dead by Daylight. The other one is through that door with a bunch of teammates. Here the killer's heartbeat, so they're nearby. However, we do have a lit totem here. Now this is a killer's ability or a killer's perk. This empowers the killer and allows them to be stronger. There are multiple different things that this can be, but once this is broken, the killer's going to know where I am. So here he comes right now. So we're going to come straight through and try and get him with a pallet. Now normally when you leave, you li well when you run you leave scratch marks however we're going to have to be very careful here we're not going to be able to outsmart the killer we're going to have to just play smarter and uh, throw the pallet down so once you hit a killer with a pallet it stuns them for a period of time and they can either choose to break it or run around now we do have a locker here we're going to have to be really lucky it looks like you see me so we're going to jump out straight away and try and run around this corner we got another pallet to slam down on him looks like he's going to come around it too i'll wait on the corner here see what he does looks like he's going to continue to run now i'm going to have to utilize a window directly in front of me this is going to mean the killer has to either go around or through. He went through, so I'm going to continue to go through. I need to be mindful. He's going to be getting very close to blood loss. I'm not going to be able to get a successful loop on this. I need to try and bait the killer into lunging like that and try and make a play. I'm not going to be able to make this play. That's unfortunate. She went right past. That was really good. We waited on the corner and we crouched below her field of view. And that kind of put us in a really good situation. Now we fast forward to the window and she took it. She's coming around. We're blocking her line of sight. Let's see what we can do here. And we're going to do this step one more time. And we'll see what that happens now. We're going to have to come inside and do one of two plays. We're going to try this kind of play again. And it looks like it worked. It went right past us. And now we're going to have to throw the pallet. Okay, it's all about line of sight. I'm leading one direction to see where he goes. Just like that. Whatever you do, you never want to go to the basement. It can be very dangerous. Now, I need to be smart here in terms of I need to find something to defend myself with. Now, we've got the killer coming from the left again. I'm going to make a play round to the right. Blocking line of sight. That's a good play. He's going to have bloodlust. It's going to be very close. I'm going to double step the window. I did a slow rather than a fast. Therefore, there was no sound indicator. Now, we're coming up with a completely different style of play. He's very fast. I need to take a hit or give a pallet. I'm going to... I did nothing. So, now I take a free hit anyways. And there's not much I can do about that. I'm going to try and crouch and go behind the killer. Didn't fall for it three times. It was greedy, greedy of me to think. Now you're going to be able to hear myself crying. This means the killer is going to be able to hear this too. And I need to try and avoid him. We're going to try and utilize a window one more time. And just like that, we got away. You're going to have to be very careful. This is classified as looping. A lot of killers don't like when survivors do this. But it's a form of defense, much like a locker. When you're in a locker... The killer's not going to be able to hear you cry as much, but be very careful. Underneath, you can see a blood point or a blood uh, spot in the ground. If the killer's paying attention, they can see it too. So we're going to come out of the locker now. It appears that the killer is around, but doesn't know where I am. So we're going to have to give him the pallet or run an additional lap. For hind sake of the video and keeping it short, I'm going to let him catch me here at this pallet. So we're going to let him get that hit. All right, now that I'm on the ground, I have uh, three minutes before I bleed out, approximately three minutes. However, the, uh, it's not over yet. I can wiggle while on the shoulder of a killer by pressing the A and D key, and this means I can wiggle out of his grasp. It makes it harder for him to walk. However, if he puts me on a hook, I will be sacrificed to the entity. Normally, you get three hooks. However, since I'm the last player in the trial, I will only go straight to struggle, and then I will die from struggle. If there were multiple survivors left, he'd have to hook me three times to kill me. But unfortunately, that is a game ending on the negative side for a survivor when you die but the beauty of that is with a bit more practice you'll see you'll be able to make very very good use of the jungle gyms and become more efficient and effective Alrighty guys, as you can see, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Now, Dead by Daylight is a fantastic game. I can recommend it to a lot of different people. This is a basic guide. If it has helped you in any way, please let me know in the comments below. It was a pleasure to be here for you guys, and we will be back with some more educational content alongside how to play a little bit more killer and uh, a little bit more advanced tips and tricks. So thank you guys for watching.